Hey, what's up guys? My name is John Silva and today we're going to continue with rendering light onto shapes. So, yeah, let's get started. Alright, now, I obviously already have a pre-recorded um, video of this and let's just talk right through it. As you notice, uh, we changed the background color as well as the position of the light source. It's still going to be a, a sunlight, just so that we can keep on the same theme, but we're spicing things up quite a bit. Now we have a dawn light, plus an edge light, plus a backlight. So this means that it's at dawn, right? So we're going to have really nice uh, cast shadows and, uh, and colors. Plus, we're going to have some edge light, which is is rim light, it's exactly the same thing. So we're gonna have a nice defined glowy uh, edges around the, um, the shapes. And backlight. Now, backlight is when the light is behind uh, an object that you're, you're shooting or you're, you're painting, but that light is gonna kinda, it's gonna come through uh, uh, the piece almost right it's, it's gonna fill in even the, the shadows and we're almost in a misty way but not quite so um, now color here is quite uh, important seems like I didn't quite get there there you go because it's dawn it's gonna be uh, you know the, the main dominating colors are gonna be all types of uh, reds reds and, and purples and even pinks um that's going to be the dominant color you don't you don't want to when rendering these shapes as things as the shape goes away from you it, it becomes more of a cooler color therefore in the color spectrum it goes more towards uh, you know towards blue and if it goes a little bit more towards blue, means that it's gonna pass through uh, purple eventually. And we want we want to mix in because the time, uh, the dawn time is just it has really really nice colors and can make things quite cinematic, which I believe a lot of you um, like that, and so do I. I quickly checking in. In black and white because even though we're painting with color we still want it it's our main priority that uh, our shapes are going to be darker than than the background now the same as uh, part one if you haven't watched part one i i really think you should because i explained uh, a lot of the early process and and you'll know you'll be on par what what's happening here much better I'm quite slowly um, thinking and mixing in colors because um, at this time of the day it's just there's so many mixed in uh, browns and yellows and sometimes even a, a touch of green and all these little nuances are gonna make your whatever shape you're rendering more more alive really. Um, making sure that this time, because we have so much going on, we have three types of lights combined in a way. Um, I'm, I want to make sure that I'm following those those guidelines that I that I drew. So as the shapes come towards us, it's going to be darker, and as it goes further away from us, it's the opposite. It's going to get lighter. still fixing it because we this step is very important there the early st stages and and mixing in the color properly and the value i was just checking it's extremely important so and also i'm i'm allowed to cuz i already have everything set up I already had the the shapes and basically the masking the yellow masking 
so that I don't go over the the borders. Therefore, I'm, I'm allowed to spend more time than I usually uh, could. Now you may notice that the top part and and the right side, the hour right side of this square are almost identical in value. Like if you squint your eyes like that and you take a good look at it, it's almost as if they're both um, having the same value. And I honestly should have done that later, but because I'm so used to this type of process, I want to. Uh, I already went ahead and and made those sites similarly uh, in value, and that's because in between that square and the cylinder in the center, there's going to be light going through. And by making those two values close to one another, um, it's going to help me uh, make that feel like a fill light uh, from the backlight. This light is going to go through those those two shapes and it's going to fill in the space with, with some color from the sun. So just, just keep that in mind. Usually I would have just made one flat color as I did on the, on the shadow side, but uh, I'm just so used to it that I, I do things ahead of time. The more you keep doing this, the more you keep practicing, like, don't, uh, don't uh, be discouraged. Um, if somehow I, I can make things look maybe a little bit easier um, or even harder, then, uh, you know, you'll always find your way and always do it at your own pace. Don't follow someone, someone else's p uh, pace. Right. If you can't keep up with someone, or if someone can't keep up with you, then change the pace of um, how hard you you study and you do these kind of exercises. Now, uh, just seconds ago, I had a little bit of a glow to like where the light is going to hit mainly with a dodge tool set to highlights it's just uh, it was just a touch or two to warm up the colors a little bit more the the colors i already have in there now as you notice i'm gently trying to add in that fill light that uh, like from the backlight that i was just talking about and i have to be very gentle with this so that i don't destroy uh, my edges um because even though light fills in that space, you'll still have sharp edges, for the most part. Um, both uh, backlight, uh, actually all of them, uh, when there's dawn, uh, plus edge light, plus black light, all three have one s similar thing in common, is that whatever object you're rendering, the silhouette will always be no noticeably darker, right? Aside from the areas where it's been directly lidden or lightened. Um, but for, for the most part, if I wouldn't be adding the edge light, then it would be much darker. The area that I'm just painting now, the, the rim light, the edge light in there in yellow, would be much, much darker. Um, in a way, I'm almost thinking like a... 3D software, where you add one light, right? Uh, I don't know if you, uh, if you ever uh, use the 3D software, but uh, if you haven't, then you can set up lights in 3D. So you'll set up one light source, then you'll see what effects it causes on on that basic shape, and then you add another one, and now suddenly it's uh, the previous one plus the new one, and then you keep as you keep adding, it adds, right? So if if we just had dawn, or if we just had edge lighting, then we would have a different result from this. 
and that may be actually a good a good practice i don't remember doing that exactly but what i just mentioned adding one light source at a time that may be a very good exercise i, I can see that being a, a very um, beneficial exercise you you paint one light source and then once you're done with that you add another one and then you can add as many as you want and build on that So it seems like I'm done with with the square. Now, since I spent so much time on, on the square, I'm going to use those colors because they're going to be affected uh, the same. Also, um, I should mention that the material that you're rendering is also going to be... Um, it's actually quite important in a way because each different material, even though it's the same shape, um, it's going to react differently to light. Now, uh, these, these uh, shapes, I'm thinking more of a, maybe concrete or anything that it's matte looking and has a little bit of a rough surface. Mm. All, all three are, I'm thinking that they're the same type of material, but if I would draw, if I would decide suddenly to change the material, then we could have more reflections, or it could be um, overall darker, or the, the highlights could could be much more minimal, or the, or ac actually the opposite. It, we could have much more uh, highlights depending on on what material you're painting and how glossy you you you're you're rendering that shape right um i'm not going to talk too too much about that because we already made a video about that you guys should check it out uh, materials rendering and i i talk a lot about light and how light affects the those materials so i'd recommend you guys check it out for this one we mainly focus on on the form really like obviously light is extremely important but main concern form again always look at those squares and if you notice i'm trying to keep them as like like as equally rendered um that the the row each row of of squares as i go horizontally i try to keep it around the same the same value and color now i'm adding orange to the sides because um i'm ready to add some some edge lighting to the size of this cylinder again uh, notice that i'm not tr i'm not trying to go too far from where those red lines are right next to one another because that's where that's as far as it would be affected because it's not really towards the, the light source but it'll still have a lot of bouncing bouncing light effects from from the environment and that's going to help us uh, in a little bit when we'll we'll actually add in the edge lighting now i'm adding a, a darker stroke right in the center because uh, again i didn't since i didn't add the shadow i'm thinking ahead of time that there's going to be a shadow uh, dead in the center right there so i'm going to just hint that there's a darker stripe in in the middle but nothing too nothing too uh, harsh now the edges were looking a little too too light well, this is the, um, the closest object to us, therefore, it should appear the darkest in this type of, of lighting, lighting setup. Now just cleaning up, really? But even, even the cleanup, I still think about those uh, form lines. Uh, like, those form lines are in my are in my imagination 
most most of the time well nowadays i i don't really draw those red lines unless there's something that i can't quite figure out that's more complex um once you get so used to them you you see those lines on on the shape like they're being projected from your mind uh, so as you see those oranges are looking quite nice now that i'm using the the dodge tool set to highlight and i'm i'm trying not to overdo it right we want to keep a very thin stripe and not all the way uh through the the edge of the cylinder i still it's more it's mainly at the top and in a spot here and there it becomes overexposed and and reaches nearly pure white or even pure white soon i'll have to do the top part because it's looking dumb right now <laughs> i'm wanting to add what i just did to um, to the cylinder i want to do it to the rectangle so that it starts fitting Because they are, after all, in the same place. Um, I'm thinking that the square needs to have a little bit more contrast. And as we add contrast, we um, automatically bring the, the square a bit closer to us. And a little bit of bouncing light honestly at this point I'm more looking towards the warmth than anything else because it was looking a little bit gray and uh, at dawn things are really not that gray uh, it's quite the opposite everything just seems to be faded in, in this glow saturated range of um, red colors warm colors now going back to the cylinder doing a very quick selection very quick yeah um, i mean very slow selection around so that i don't go too over the edge and color pick the other top now this side will have to be darker though because it's taller then the the square and it's closer to us therefore um it's not gonna get as much uh light hitting the top as the as the square is i mean rectangle going back with our good old dodge tool I notice I'm, I'm being very gentle like this these tools you have to be very gentle with them because you can overdo so easily like so quick and um i believe right now i'm trying to add that glow from the backlight now it's the backlight time i try to follow that uh, dawn rendering like it would be a dawn and then giving a little bit of edge light and then at the end the black light kind of feel trying to make the light go almost go through the, um, the cylinder and i'll do the same for the rest of the objects once once i add the shadows uh later on everything is going to tie in quite nicely together I'm wanting to actually exaggerate in that area, but it's only in that area, almost as a focal point. Um, you know, since we are trying to be extreme in our light setup, then why not? Make things more interesting. I'm smoothing some edges in the shadow side but um but it still needs to to be sharp enough that you can clearly 
uh, view it. In real life, to be honest with you, th those edges would be quite sharp. But you, I was like, you know what? I, for the sake of making it more interesting, I'm gonna make it uh, some some parts here and there softer. Now, yeah. Now we're going to the ball, and this is the easiest one. There's Especially with this light setup, this one was super easy. But then again, always, always following the, um, those lines. They're your guide and makes things so much easier. At first, if you're not used to doing these type of exercises, your brain is going to it's going to be a lot to take in and you're going to feel very tired because you have to think all the time and imagine, um, you know, with lines, how, how would this look like, right? Um, and there's not much to talk about uh, rendering this ball. It's exactly the same as the other two and it's the most simple one. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and maybe so, uh, advise you what you could do as an like as an exercise in real life, if you don't have, uh, maybe if you don't have Photoshop, most likely if you're watching this, you probably have a software that can do similar things to Photoshop or Photoshop itself. But regardless, you should do, um, as I said earlier on, set up a still life and paint that, whether it's with traditionals, the, uh, medium or digital whatever you may choose um, another thing is if you I think you I believe you can get on Amazon or even at your local art art supply store um, you can get styrofoam I believe I'm, I believe I'm not saying that correctly but uh, you can get like styrofoam um, basic shapes like balls and and cubes and cylinders and like diamond shape uh, and if you do get those you try to draw these lines as we drew here um, on the actual object so you'd have for example a ball and then uh, with the pen you draw like or pencil you draw all around the ball vertically and horizontally and then you get, grab a, I don't have any light here, but you grab a light uh, light source, whatever you, you may choose, and point that, but make your room dark and point that uh, at that object, right? Um, if you don't have, then things that, obj simple objects that you can throw away or they're not very uh, important, you just draw on them those lines and look at them in perspective like change angles and keep looking at them and and change the light source and all the time uh, analyzing right so that's uh, an exercise that really really helps so much so right now i'm adding the actual light into the background as if there would be the sun quite low, uh, peeking through the canvas. Since we already we made this quite fast, might as well just make a, the the rest prettier. Adding a, a few pinks. And filling in the rest of the... Um, the ground should be a little bit darker as well since you know the, the light comes from further away and and the ground is closer to us the same fundamental um, is actually applied same, same as the objects well the ground itself would be you know, would be a simple, simple shape as well. So, giving a little, a little glow to 
my light source, changing the color so that it's visible at all times. Now that I changed the background, it was blending a little bit. And uh, yeah, I believe I'm going to start adding in the shadows. I want to make the shadows uh, purple, like a deep purple. Again, I'm, I'm all eyeballing where the, the shadow might be cast on. And now, like, dawn light has very, uh, like, very extended um, shadows. Uh, the letter's not in the way. It has very extended shadows, so we're not really going to see... Um, or, we're not going to see that much of um sharper edge at the edge of the shadow because it's going to be filled in because it ex extends further away the further away it extends from um the object the more that shadow will be filled in with light so it's going to become softer and i'll i'll fill it in once i'm done with the rest of the shapes eyeballing the Cylinder one, two. Always keeping in mind where the where the light source uh, roughly is. And now the circle will do the exact same thing as on uh, the previous part, where I kind of eyeball where the shadow would be on that cylinder if it would be on the top. Like if it be lit in from the top, and then I use that as a reference for the perspective where the the, the shadow would uh, where the shadow would perhaps fall. So yeah, I believe we're quite close. I'm gonna need to fill in those shadows. Especially with the the backlight here, those shadows are going to be filled in quite nicely. I set my brush mode to linear dodge, just gives a more like that kind of effect makes makes my my light um, like my light color much more intense and fills in quite nicely without too much too much hard work. So as you see, I'm softening the some of the edges you can see it's looking it's looking cool i like it now as i was mentioning as it goes further away from us i want to make it i'm using smudge tool and uh, with some brushes i made i'm just blending in some areas not everywhere i'm still keeping hard edged uh, uh, shadow areas Of course, you want to make those those good looking too, not just the uh, the form itself. I do a little bit more darker to the center since it's it has the most uh, absence of light. And the round one, it becomes quite soft because it's in the air and, you know, it's not, it's already by, by default, it's not touching the floor. Therefore, it's not in contact with something. Um, and yeah, I believe we're quite close Yeah, to the end. So we're, we're pretty much, yeah, we're done. So I hope you guys liked it, and um, yeah, if you want more of these like light type of uh, uh, rendering, and maybe we can get more uh, into detail about uh, just light in itself, then uh, yeah, let us know, and I'll see you on the next video.